You know, I wasn't even gonna make a video about the Logan Paul controversy, but YouTube's sheer amount of ape-like incompetence in handling the situation just forced my hand. Now let me preface this rant by saying that this is not a Logan Paul video. I don't give a shit about the Paul brothers and their wacky hijinks. And if you keep giving them the attention they want, then you're part of the problem. This is a video about YouTube. Oh, mercy me. YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. How on earth is the number two website on the internet this incompetent? Nine days. It took them nine days to respond to the biggest PR disaster they've had since, well, basically everything that happened last year. But holy Christ, you'd think that considering everything that happened last year, YouTube would learn a thing or two about running a company without causing everyone to hate them. But no, apparently YouTube has learned absolutely nothing and could not last one day in 2018 without screwing up yet again. Everyone knows the story already, but for argument's sake, let's review what happened. So old footface Logan Paul broke YouTube's guidelines by uploading footage of an actual corpse. But since the Paul brothers are YouTube's golden boys, YouTube chose not to enforce their rules and actually handpicked the video for their trending page. They allow this content on trending while simultaneously demonetizing regular users content at record proportions. They allow this content on trending just a month after the concerns of child endangerment forced YouTube to scramble and try and save their image for advertisers. YouTube kept this video trending while taking down other users videos pointing out YouTube's unscrupulous hypocrisy. YouTube allowed this video to stay online for over two days before Logan Paul himself himself took it down, only after receiving the biggest backlash against a single YouTuber I've ever witnessed. Logan Paul was the number one Twitter trend for about a day straight. Pretty much every big YouTuber from across the board came out expressing how terrible Logan's video was. The video was picked up by the biggest news outlets and Logan Paul became a global embarrassment. And YouTube did or said nothing about it for more than a week. So just when everyone had moved on to Ugandan Knuckles or whatever, YouTube finally comes out and says, Oh, okay guys, y'all are right. Logan Paul did a bad thing and now we're gonna put him in timeout. Nine days after it happened. Now, I don't know if YouTube receives their news by horseback, but considering they're a website on the internet, one could infer that YouTube was aware of this situation for an awfully long time before doing anything about it. Nine days seems like a pretty delayed reaction to a massive scandal threatening the credibility of your entire site. So how come YouTube had to spend nine days deciding whether or not to discipline a guy who everyone immediately agreed is a disgrace to the website? What on earth took them so long? Well, I'll tell you what took them so long. YouTube spent more than a week mulling over whether or not to keep Logan Paul as their poster boy. It's no secret that ever since PewDiePie's little racism controversy from last year, YouTube has been grooming Jake and Logan Paul as the next faces of YouTube. They constantly promote their content. They give each brother a nice shiny YouTube Red series, they promote the hell out of that, and they put the Paul brothers front and center in the YouTube Rewind. It's so obvious that YouTube is playing favorites with these washed up Disney Channel stars and trying to make them the face of their brand. They ignored all the warning signs. They ignored all the controversy and evidence that the Paul brothers lacked the stability and the maturity to represent the entire YouTube community. Stevie Wonder could have seen that the Paul brothers aren't exactly the most professional candidates to represent the second biggest site on the web. As a matter of fact, they're kind of idiots. But nope, YouTube ignored all of that and went ahead with the Paul Brothers World Tour. And what do you know? They acted like idiots and embarrassed the whole platform. But the problem for YouTube management was that they had spent the past six months putting all their eggs in the Paul basket. And then they go ahead and just fail so spectacularly that they make YouTube's leadership look like a bunch of hapless morons for even putting them in that position. I mean, how could they not see this coming? So the Paul brothers' dumbass hijinks force YouTube to contemplate backtracking the past six months of their marketing and put them back to square one in finding their new poster child for the site. I'm guessing that YouTube didn't want to waste all of that effort, so they tried to wait it out and hope that the controversy would just blow over. But too bad for them, the Logan Paul video turned into one of the biggest internet shitstorms in recent history. Let's be honest here, this was an unsalvageable situation after day one. 
yet it took YouTube more than a week to even respond to the issue. And YouTube's actual response just pissed me off so much that I honestly would have felt better if they had just continued doing nothing. At least then they could feign a shred of ignorance rather than forming the startling implication that they spent over a week contemplating whether or not they should keep this guy as the face of their site. But no, YouTube finally responds to the biggest public outrage they've faced in recent history through a whopping five tweets. So let's take a look at those. Many of you have been frustrated with our lack of communication recently. You're right to be. You deserve to know what's going on. Yeah, you're right. I think frustrated is a bit of an understatement at this point. But way to go, YouTube. I'm so glad you're finally amending your lack of communication by releasing five entire tweets. I guess it's too much to ask for you guys to make an actual press release or a video or anything more than a few sentences that probably took five minutes to write. But I'm glad you guys care so much about the issue that you're responding to it nine days late in the form of five tweets. So let's see what YouTube has to say. Like many others, we were upset by the video that was shared last week. Really? You were upset by the video. Well, that really clears things up. For a second there, I thought you guys were going to be happy with the ass clown parading a dead body all over your platform. But it's good to know that the video upset you guys too. Suicide is not a joke. Nor should it ever be a driving force for views. Yep, that's right. Suicide is bad. Glad you guys cleared that one up for us. Suicide is in fact bad, okay? We're already three out of five tweets in, and so far YouTube has told us that Logan Paul is upsetting and that suicide is bad. What a groundbreaking newsflash right here. It took them nine days to figure out that the Logan Paul video is upsetting and that suicide is bad. I'm so glad YouTube is really giving us the information that we need. You're really improving your communication here, YouTube. But wait, that's not even the best part. The channel violated our community guidelines. We acted accordingly, and we are looking at further consequences. Mm-hmm, yep. Showing a corpse on YouTube does in fact violate the community guidelines. Let's see here, the YouTube community guidelines, and uh, yep, no violent and graphic content. A hanging suicide victim is pretty violent and graphic. So that part checks out. It's good to see that YouTube is aware of their own community guidelines. In fact, the first half of this tweet is pretty accurate. But it's the second part of this tweet that... <laughs> That's not exactly true. We acted accordingly? What? What are you talking about? What kind of devious, bamboozling, revisionist history is this? Did YouTube wait nine days to respond to their biggest controversy in years because they thought we'd forget that they did absolutely nothing to enforce their own guidelines? They acted accordingly? Is it standard protocol at YouTube to put videos on trending when they violate your guidelines? Yeah, you certainly took down videos criticizing Logan's video, just not Logan's video. You let that one stay up for as long as you could until Logan took it down. Wait a minute. Do we live in a world where Logan Paul is better at enforcing YouTube's community guidelines than YouTube is? It's a real head scratcher for sure. I gotta hand it to you, YouTube. You blatantly lied to your community just three tweets after saying you're gonna improve your communication. That takes guts. It's too bad your lie was so obviously untrue that you got called out on it almost immediately. Just own, just own the mistake. Just own the fucking mistake. I hate defending you because <laughs> Because I'm like, YouTube's trying, they're good. And then you get this fucking softball. You get this softball of a singular, easy to handle situation. And then you're like, we did everything accordingly. Shot, really? God, you're so stupid. I guess one good thing that came out of this was that YouTube actually followed through with disciplining Logan. I thought they were just gonna give him a slap on the wrist and send him to bed without dessert. But as I was writing this, YouTube actually came out and punished Logan for his actions. They canceled his YouTube Red movie sequel and removed him from Google Preferred Advertising. Remember last year when PewDiePie messed up and YouTube punished him almost immediately? Well, how come it took them 10 whole days to decide to punish good old Footface here? And more importantly, why was Logan Paul granted these privileges in the first place? 
I know I talked about this already, but it bears repeating. Why did YouTube think it was a good idea to tout Logan Paul as the new face of YouTube? Was YouTube that desperate to find the next 12-year-old viewer magnet that they mortgaged the stability of their whole site by putting this guy at the helm? Anyway, YouTube just wraps up their big update with one final middle finger to the community. It's taken us a long time to respond. Yep, that's very true, YouTube. You're right again. We know the actions of one creator can affect the entire community, so we'll have more to share soon on the steps we're taking to ensure that a video like this is never circulated again. Oh, 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 you're taking steps. Oh goody, YouTube is taking steps. Those must be some massive strides you're taking to actually enforce the guidelines that you yourself put in place. Seriously though, what steps even need to be taken here? Just enforce your own fucking guidelines, YouTube. This is all your fault. You brought all this bad publicity on yourselves. You put this guy in power, you let him post a video of a dead body, while punishing the rest of us for even saying the word suicide, just enforce your own rules equally to everyone on the platform. Stop letting these Google preferred idiots run around above the rules. Seriously, just man up and admit that you people fucked up. Stop with these bullshit wishy-washy politician responses. The problem here is not Logan retarded fuckface Paul. The problem is you, YouTube. The problem is fucking you. You people have zero accountability. You let all these unstable jackasses take the reins of your site while shafting your honest-to-god hardworking real YouTubers. Every time something like this happens, it's the same old shit. YouTube fucks up, people are outraged, YouTube comes up with some dopey half-assed apology and then everyone just forgets about it while all the smaller YouTubers have to pick up the slack. Are you people even aware that Jake Paul also had a fuck-up at the same time as Logan's fuck-up? YouTube still hasn't done anything to punish Jake. I'm sure he still has his Google Preferred and YouTube Red series. Well, that's a good thing for Jake, since no one noticed his fuck-up because it was completely overshadowed by his brother's even bigger fuck-up. Hey YouTube, why did you make these two the face of your website again? Do the people running YouTube even watch YouTube videos? Honest question here. How could no one working for YouTube realize that the Paul brothers weren't fit to be the poster boys of this website? Were they just too busy jacking themselves off to the analytics of the number of fifth graders these guys draw to the site? Whatever the cause, it's another huge fucking oversight that led to yet another big YouTube blunder that taints the image of the entire site. If this was just a one-time thing, then maybe you could excuse YouTube. But what is this, the sixth time YouTube has royally fucked up in the past 18 months? I've lost fucking count! It has become painfully clear that the true cancerous tumor that's killing YouTube from the inside is their managerial and business administration. At this point, it just seems like YouTube is run by a bunch of 40-year-olds with business and marketing degrees who have no idea how the internet actually works. You have all these glad-handing yes-men who have never touched a video camera in their entire lives in charge of running the biggest video producing platform in the world. The fates of literally millions of would-be artists are under the control of about a dozen corporate suits in a boardroom somewhere in California. And you can chalk up most of this blame to good old Susan W, the vaunted YouTube CEO who really doesn't seem to do much of anything but sit on her ass and smile while this site rots. Under her tenure, YouTube has undergone by far the worst period in its history. Since old W took over in 2014, YouTube has endlessly chased pointless gimmicks and bells and whistles while ignoring the fundamental flaws of their platform. They chose to alienate their bread and butter core user base just so they could appeal to as much of the trendy idiot masses as possible who don't give a shit about the quality of the site. YouTube has been run so poorly over the past year and a half in particular that I would not be surprised if anyone in charge there spends more than five minutes a week watching YouTube videos. They just have to be completely oblivious to what's actually happening on YouTube based on the decisions they've made. Can you imagine if a company like Walmart or McDonald's fucked up as often and as severely as YouTube does on a regular basis? They would get slaughtered by their competitors. But the problem with YouTube is that they hold a de facto monopoly on user-generated video streaming. 
there's nowhere else to go. YouTube has the money and the advertisers, and until a real competitor appears that offers content creators a real financial incentive to jump ship, this site will continue to be run by incompetent people. YouTube's management doesn't even have to hold themselves to the same standards of companies like Facebook and Twitter. At least those companies have to answer to stockholders. Who does YouTube have to answer to? No one. They can run the site straight into the ground and they'll just be caught by the big old Google safety net. No one gets fired and everything just continues to get worse and worse, but not bad enough for anyone to actually get fired. YouTube has no accountability whatsoever. They barely communicate anything to the community, and when they do, it's usually just cryptic bullshit like this where they try and cover their asses by duct taping the gaping problems in their site, and they end up creating more questions than answers while solving nothing. And you want to know what the worst part is? Everyone buys it. Way to go, YouTube. You did something that should have been done 10 days ago. Here's a pat on the back and a gold sticker. We forgive you. When are you people gonna get your heads out of your asses and realize the real problem here? You chant ding dong the witch is dead every time the next jackass YouTuber finally gets his comeuppance and then you move on to the next witch hunt. And then, six months later, you do it all over again and again and again. It's just an endless cycle because you people are not treating the real problem. You're treating a symptom of the problem. Logan Paul was never the problem. YouTube is the problem here. So stop focusing on trying to tear down the YouTubers and start focusing on the site that enables and propagates this toxic behavior. Stop giving YouTube a free pass just for doing the bare minimum of what's already common sense to most people. We need to hold the biggest video streaming site on the web to a higher standard. If we don't hold YouTube accountable for their problems, then no one else will. And yes, this is me going off on yet another YouTube rant. Boo hoo, wow wow, so sad, complain, complain, just unsubscribe already. I don't give a shit. Go watch one of the 10,000 Jake Paul rants if you don't like what you're hearing from me, and then come back to me when YouTube fucks up yet again in two months. But this video isn't about me. I don't even like making these videos. I wish I didn't have to make these videos. I'd much rather spend my time making actual genuine content that I enjoy. I'm just a guy who wants to make some videos and entertain some people. But this is an issue I have to talk about. Because if I don't, nobody else will. And YouTube just makes it that much more necessary for me by being incompetent. I don't make these YouTube rants for views and attention. I don't make these rants for me. I make these rants because I want YouTube to be better. I make these rants because when I look at this site and see what it's become, it sickens me. At the end of the day, YouTube is still a good site with tons of upsides, but the fact that it could be so much better is just sad. And yes, I know it's difficult to run a massive site like YouTube, but when we've reached the point where pretty much every decision YouTube makes is hated by the majority of the community, maybe it's time to start asking the people running the site to be better. I'm so sick of all these people making excuses for YouTube. YouTube is not your friend. YouTube is not a benevolent mom and pop company. They're part of a multi-billion dollar corporation that has access to any resources it could possibly need. So I don't wanna hear how YouTube is just doing the best they can because they aren't. The number of problems YouTube creates for itself on a regular basis is inexcusable for a company of its stature. And the people in charge clearly aren't equipped to run this site. And until these people are expunged from power, all these problems are just gonna keep happening. So is it too much to ask for the people running the second biggest site on the web to actually give a shit? Is it?